In this section, we will take a look at the major types of DNA damage that can potentially lead to a mutation. DNA damage due to environmental factors and normal metabolic processes inside the cell occurs at a rate of 1,000 to 1 million molecular lesions per cell per day. They occur very often. While this constitutes only 0.000165% of the human genome, the amount of mutations that results during the day is a potentially upwards of 6 billion bases, and if left unrepaired, can cause mutations in critical genes, such as tumor suppressor genes, which can impede a cell's ability to carry out its function and appreciably increase the likelihood of tumor formation and disease states such as cancer. The vast majority of DNA damage affects the primary structure of the double helix. That is, the bases themselves are chemically modified. These modifications can, in turn, disrupt the molecule's regular helical structure by introducing non-native chemical bonds or bulky adducts that do not fit in the standard double helix. There are several types of DNA damage that can occur due either to normal cellular processes or due to the environmental exposure of the cells to DNA damaging agents. DNA can be damaged by oxidative processes, the alkylation of bases, base loss caused by the hydrolysis of bases or mistakes made during replication, bulky adduct formation, DNA crosslinking, and DNA strand breaks, including both single and double-stranded breaks. An overview of these types of damage are described in this section. Let's start by looking at oxidative damage. Reactive oxygen species can cause significant cellular stress and damage. Hydroxyl radicals are one of the most reactive electrophilic of the reactive oxygen species and can be produced by ultraviolet and ionizing radiations or from other radicals arising from enzymatic reactions. The hydroxyl radical can cause the formation of 8-oxo-7-8-dihydroguanine, or 8-oxo-G, from normal guanine residues. They also can form other oxidative products. However, 8-oxo-G is one of the most common, and so we'll focus on it here. Of the four bases, guanine is the most easily oxidized of the nucleic acid bases. This is because it has the lowest ionization potential among the DNA bases, and 8-oxo-G is one of the most abundant DNA lesions and is considered a biomarker of oxidative stress. It has been estimated that up to 100,000 of these lesions can occur daily in DNA per cell, 100,000 lesions like this per cell. Increased levels of 8-oxo-7-8-dihydroguanine are frequently found associated with carcinogenesis and other disease states such as Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease, diabetes, COPD, and many others. During the replication of DNA that contains this mutation, Adenine is the most often incorporated across from the lesion. Thus, following replication of the 8-oxo-DG, when it's excised during the repair process, a thymine will be incorporated in its place instead of the regular guanine residue. Thus, 8-oxo-DG mutations typically result in G to T transversions. Oxidative damage can also occur with other reactive oxygen species, such as superoxide and peroxides. Many of these are produced as a byproduct of normal metabolism. Oxygen gives life, but it also damages it. Methylation and acetylation are also common modifications that can happen to the DNA bases. Modifications of this nature are caused by alkylating agents. These are widespread in nature, 
and include natural metabolites produced during normal metabolism. Alkylating agents can cause damage at all exocyclic nitrogens and oxygens in the DNA and RNA molecules, as well as the ring nitrogens. The most common type of alkylation is methylation, with major products occurring at the N7 position, such as N7 methylguanine, or at the N3 base of adenine, creating N3 methyladenine, or at O6 methylguanine. Interestingly, O alkylations are more mutagenic and harmful than N alkylations, which may be more cytotoxic, but not as mutagenic. As we will explore in chapter 13, methylation of DNA also serves an important mechanism in regulating gene expression. An apurinic or apyrimidinic site, or an AP site, is also known as an A-basic site, and it's a location in DNA, or also in RNA, but it's much less likely, that neither has a purine or a pyrimidine base. In fact, it's lost the base, which can spontaneously happen, or it could be due to DNA damage. Yes, that's right. Sometimes DNA bases just fall off the DNA spontaneously. In fact, it's estimated that under physiological conditions, about 10,000 apurinic sites and 500 apyrimidinic sites may be generated in a cell daily from just spontaneous base loss. AP sites can be formed by spontaneous depurination, but also occur as intermediates in base excision repair, the repair process that will be described in section 12.5. If left unrepaired, AP sites can lead to mutations during semi-conservative replication. They can cause the replication fork to stall and then are often bypassed by translesion synthesis that will be discussed in greater detail in section 12.8. In E. coli, adenine is preferentially inserted across from AP sites. This is known as the A rule. The situation is more complex in higher eukaryotes with different nucleotides showing a preference depending on the organism and the environmental conditions. Some chemicals are biologically reactive and will form covalent linkages with biological molecules such as DNA and proteins, creating large bulky adducts or appendages essentially that hang off of the DNA bases. We will use the mutagen or carcinogen benzoapyrene as an example for this process. Benzoapyrene is a polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon that forms during the incomplete combustion of organic matter at temperatures between 300 degrees Celsius and 600 degrees Celsius. The ubiquitous compound can be found in coal tar, tobacco smoke, and many foods, especially grilled meats. Benzoapyrene is known as a procarcinogen. That means that it needs to be biologically activated by metabolism before it forms a reactive metabolite. The epoxide forms are the damaging agents. For example, the activated benzoapyrene 7,8-dihydro-9,10-epoxide can form a DNA adduct with guanine residues. This adduct is really bulky, and it interferes with the normal base pairing that occurs within the DNA helix. This causes a bulky lesion that distorts the DNA helix. If left unrepaired, the DNA polymerase will typically place an adenine residue opposite the lesion. When the adduct is excised after replication, the original G-based will then be replaced by a thymine residue that will match the adenine that is now across from that bulky lesion. Thus, this results in a G to T transversion. Crosslinking of DNA occurs when various exogenous or endogenous reagents react with two nucleotides of DNA, forming a covalent linkage between them. This crosslink can occur within the same strand of the DNA, called an intrastrand crosslink, or it can happen with bases that are across from each other 
on the two different DNA strands called interstrand crosslinks. These adducts interfere with cellular metabolism, such as DNA replication and transcription, often triggering cell death. So UV light can cause molecular crosslinks to form between two pyrimidine residues, commonly two thymine residues, that are positioned consecutively within a single strand of DNA. That's shown here. There are two common UV products, cyclobutene pyrimidine dimers and 6,4 photoproducts. These pre-mutagenic lesions alter the structure and possibly the base pairing. Up to 50 to 100 such reactions per second might occur in a skin cell during exposure to sunlight. However, these are usually corrected within seconds by photolyase reactivation or nucleotide excision repair. Uncorrected lesions can inhibit polymerases, cause misreading during transcription or replication, or lead to the arrest of replication. Pyrimidine dimers are the primary cause of melanomas in humans or skin cancer. Ionizing radiation, such as that created by radioactive decay or in cosmic rays, will cause DNA strand breaks. Low-level ionizing radiation may induce irreparable DNA damage, leading to replicational and transcriptional errors needed for neoplasia, leading to premature aging and cancer. Damage of this nature can cause abortive catalysis to occur. So during a normal transcription or replication process, the DNA helix needs to be opened to allow the polymerase enzymes to be processive. When DNA begins to be unwind in one location, an area of positive supercoiling will also result. Topoisomerase enzymes will relieve that supercoiling by splicing the backbone of the DNA and unwinding the supercoils and then religating it together or resealing the backbone. However, if DNA is carrying damage when the process of transcription or replication is occurring, the topoisomerase enzymes can undergo abortive catalysis and they get trapped in their transition state when the DNA strands are broken open. If this happens, the single or double strand breaks can then occur depending on whether class 1 or class 2 topoisomerase enzymes have stalled. In the next section, we will learn about the response and repair pathways that cells have developed to deal with DNA damage.